Look, we're all hurting from GPU stock vanishing on site, and hopefully stock will arrive and be available to purchase in the not too distant future. But for the time being, if you want to improve your system's performance and your gaming experience, what do you do? Well, I've got a load of different tips and tricks that you can try out, some of which you may already know, some of which you might have thought you've known but forgot to check, some are basically overclocking, and others are a bit more esoteric and specific to certain use cases. But either way, they're all compiled into this one video, so let's start running you through them. The first one is something that I've mentioned in a couple of different videos testing RAM frequency recently, which is enabling XMP. XMP is Extreme Memory Profile and is technically the Intel designation, the universal one is DOCP, but either way, when you buy a stick of memory or a memory kit, the base frequency that that runs at when you just plug it into your system and do nothing else is normally 2133 or sometimes it's 2400. But odds are you didn't buy a 2133 or 2400 kit, you probably bought something like 3000, 3200 or even 3600 and if you haven't enabled XMP or manually set that yourself, it's not running at that speed. Now there's an easy way for you to check in Windows what your RAM speed is running at. Open Task Manager, uh, if you're not looking at the advanced view, click Show More and Advanced. Uh, then click the Performance, click your RAM, and you will see on the bottom right hand corner what speed it says it is running at. If it's running at its designated speed, the speed you paid for, then Awesome, you don't need to, to check this one, but if it is running at 2133 or 2400 megahertz, then it is worth checking in your BIOS by restarting your PC and normally hitting the delete key a load of times as it boots up, uh, so that you can get into the BIOS and check if XMP or AXMP, DOCP, any of those are enabled. Next is in the same place, specifically updating your BIOS. If you have a newer CPU or you just haven't updated your BIOS potentially ever, then there can be some pretty significant performance gains to be had just by updating it. Even if you've updated it maybe when you built the system, say a year ago, there's likely not gonna be too many direct performance gains by updating, except for some added features. One of the new features that has been coming to market is the option for resizable bar support. That lets your CPU address all of your graphics card's memory at once, rather than tiny little chunks at a time, which can help give you extra performance at no extra cost. Again, that's something that you can enable in your BIOS, assuming you have updated it to allow that to be supported. To check what BIOS version you have, you can actually do that in Windows with a lot of systems. Press your start button and type DXDIAG, all one word. Press enter to run it. You can click yes or no to the first checkbox, doesn't matter. And when it pops up, you will see an option for uh, your system uh, name, which will be your motherboard. And just below that will be their, your BIOS version. You can then Google that motherboard name, click on the vendor's site. So in my case, it's a Gigabyte X570 ARS Master. So click on their page, uh, then click on support, find the BIOS options and uh, compare the BIOS version that you have to the BIOS version that's listed as most recent. If the BIOS version that's on their website is more recent, it's a higher number or letter or whatever else, then download it, uh, put it on a USB stick, specifically by opening the zip file and extracting all of the files that are in the zip file into the root of your USB stick, then reboot your PC and press the delete key to get into the BIOS, and then you're looking for the updater tool. This is often called something flash, instant flash, easy flash, something like that. Find that, select the file, uh, let it update, it will reboot, and then that is your BIOS updated. It is important to note that by updating your BIOS, you are likely resetting all of your settings, so, if you've enabled resizable bar support, XMP, done any overclocking or anything like that, even your boot priority may be reset. So make sure when it does reboot to press the delete key and go set up all of those settings again. Jumping back into Windows, one of the most common ways to get extra performance is by updating your graphics card drivers. 
This may be something that you do relatively regularly, although it's important to note that there are new graphics drivers from both Intel and AMD pretty much once a month, so for certain games and certain titles, there can be significant benefits to updating your drivers for a, you know, to the most recent version. Now to do that, you can either do it two ways. You can do it manually by going to either Nvidia or AMD's website, uh, downloading the, the most recent driver and installing it, or if you use Nvidia's GeForce Experience tool, that will let you uh, not only detect and notify you of new drivers, but let you install them automatically with just one click, which is pretty handy. You can do the same through AMD's driver with no added logins or anything like that. Quite nice. Uh, again, from the update section, and that lets you install it nice and quickly. Another thing that you can do while you're updating your graphics drivers is enable FreeSync or G-Sync if you haven't already. This does require both a compatible graphics card, monitor, and in Nvidia's case, the right connection type, but if you have all of those things, you can head to the Nvidia control panel and set, uh, press the setup G-Sync option and make sure that it's both enabled and personally, I would have it enabled for both windowed and full screen, then hit apply. And on the AMD side, head to the display section and enable free sync. Now what I mean by which cable, graphics card, monitor, your monitor will have to support adaptive sync. That is a requirement. On AMD, you can use both both DisplayPort and HDMI with FreeSync with no problems. However, on NVIDIA cards, you have to be using a GTX 16 series or an RTX series card and a compatible monitor to be able to use HDMI, otherwise it's DisplayPort only. And while you're checking your monitor settings, it's worth double checking what refresh rate your monitor is running at and seeing that it is running at the maximum that you've paid for essentially, especially if you have a high refresh rate monitor like 144 hertz or higher, Windows has a habit of resetting that or sometimes when you update your graphics drivers, it can get reset as well. So it's a good idea to double check. Of course, neither this nor the FreeSync and G-Sync give you actively more performance, but they do improve your gaming experience, so that's what it's all about. So to check what refresh rate your display is running at, you can either do that through your graphics driver or the more universal method through Windows by right-clicking your desktop and clicking display settings, scrolling down and clicking advanced display settings, and then in theory, uh, that should show you what refresh rate your monitor is running at. If it is running at lower than what you paid for, what you think it should be, then either on your versions of Windows 10, you can set your refresh rates in the same window, or if you're running an older version, then you'll need to click the display adapter properties for display one, uh, click on the monitor tab, and then you can set the refresh rates and click apply and okay and set it there. Lastly, for the easy ones, Ryzen CPU owners should definitely make sure you have the most up-to-date Ryzen chipset driver from AMD's website. Specifically for Ryzen 3000 series owners, you might want to enable the Ryzen balanced power plan in Windows, which can help you get a bit more performance out of your CPU and potentially even decrease power consumption as well. Either way, you might also, if you don't have a Ryzen 3000 series CPU, want to head to your power plan settings and select high performance to again get the most power and performance out of your CPU. Next are the options that I call technically overclocking because you essentially are. Now, I wanna start with the CPU specific ones. So it's important to note that you should not attempt these if you don't have a good CPU cooler and therefore good temperatures and you aren't potentially willing to void your CPU's warranty if you try and push it too far. Now, the options that I want to discuss here aren't directly overclocking, at least for the CPU, as that's a little bit more technical than I'm looking to get into in this video, but I wanna start with Ryzen CPU owners because you've got a fantastic option built right into your BIOS. Again, head to the BIOS by restarting your PC and pressing the delete key, and then go to the overclocking or settings page and find the AMD overclocking options in which you'll find precision boost overdrive. This is the option that allows your CPU to essentially run just a bit faster, boost a bit harder for a bit longer. And what you do is enable precision boost overdrive or PBO and set a higher target for both PVT, TDC and EDC than you have by default. 
So for, say, a Ryzen 5600X, which I've actually done some testing on recently, video in the cards above, uh, you want to set something like a 125 watts PPC, 150 amps TDC, and 200 amps EDC, and that should get you a pretty reasonable performance gate. There are different values for different CPUs, so I'll leave that part for you to check out and sort yourself, but it can give you a reasonable performance advantage, although mostly not in specific gaming scenarios, it's more CPU-bound applications like rendering videos. On the Intel side of things, especially if you have a more recent, say, last two or three generations of Intel CPU, you have an option that is either called multi-core enhancements or often your motherboard will ask you what type of cooler you're using and it will adjust your PL1, PL2 and Tau options. PL1 and PL2 are your power limits or power targets uh, and Tau is the time that it spends on boost. By default for the more recent CPUs, I think Tau is 56 seconds, where if you want to, to adjust that to potentially an infinite amount of time, as long as the CPU is uh, both powered and cooled relatively well, you can get some significant performance gains even in gaming. So that's a nice option. Moving on to actually overclocking, specifically of your graphics card. Now this one is slightly more risky as you definitely don't want to be damaging your graphics card right now as buying a replacement one is clearly very difficult. With that said, you can be pretty gentle with your overclocks, assuming you have reasonable temperatures and you can push your card a little bit higher and harder, then you should be okay. If you're using an NVIDIA card, you want to use either your manufacturer specific tool like EVGA Precision, or you can use a more generic tool like MSI Afterburner to do that. If you have an AMD card though, it's rather nice. They have overclocking options built directly into the driver, so you can just use those instead, and we'll cover that in a second. Starting with NVIDIA cards and MSI Afterburner, what you want to do is first of all benchmark your card's performance. You can use a canned benchmark tool like Unigen Heaven or Superposition, or a number of games also offer uh, built-in benchmarks that you can run pretty consistently. Then once you have your scores there, you can open up MSI Afterburner and increase the power limits and increase both the core and the memory frequency uh, by five or 10 megahertz each. You want to apply that and run the benchmark again, make sure that your system is still stable, you're not getting any visual artifacting or glitching on screen and that it's not crashing either. And then you repeat that process until you run out of extra performance, your system starts crashing or you start getting display artifacting. On the AMD side, it's really very simple. You open up the graphics driver and click on the performance tab, and then you click the auto overclock button. That's pretty much it. You can go into the manual settings and tweak the exact same variables I was just talking about yourself. However, AMD has an auto overclocking button built into its driver, and so uh, personally, that's the, the easiest and simplest solution. You can also use the auto underclocking option, which while it won't likely give you any extra performance, it will help decrease power consumption and therefore heat output, which is quite a nice trade-off, often for very little to no performance losses. Finally, for a few more esoteric options and some more uh, hot off the press type ones, I want to start with removing the tracking and bloatware that comes with Windows 10 by default. You can use a PowerShell script to do this. You will need to be careful on what script you want to use, making sure that it's not going to do anything malicious to your system, but there are a number of relatively well-trusted options on GitHub that you can check out. What they do is remove all of the pre-installed apps and remove all of the tracking and telemetry that you generally don't want running in the background anyway, which can help improve your system's performance, responsiveness, and all that good stuff. The other nice benefit is that you can also often customize your system to how you want to use it. My key example for this is allowing you to have, uh, when you open up a new Windows Explorer window, by default, Windows 10 takes you to the quick access page. Personally, I prefer having this PC open instead, and so that is one of the options that you can enable using those sorts of PowerShell scripts. 
the way you use them is open the, open the script up in ideally Notepad++, it makes it a lot easier. And then you put a hash next to the options that you do not want to run and remove a hash or make sure there isn't one next to the options that you do. Save it, enable scripts or scripts to run uh, in PowerShell, which you can search for that. Uh, and then you can run the script, it will run through all of its options and restart your PC. Another option is something a bit more niche for a very specific use case and setup. Specifically what I'm talking about is having multiple monitors connected to a relatively low-end graphics card. A system with say a 1050 with two gigabytes of VRAM or even an older card with say one gigabyte of VRAM, especially if you have two or even three monitors connected, even if those other monitors aren't doing much while you're gaming, that extra VRAM usage and processing power can take a strain on your system's performance. It will vary card to card and set up, and I've actually got a video coming on uh, that shortly, so make sure you're subscribed so you see that one. But the long story short is if you are running on a relatively low-end graphics card, especially one with limited VRAM, you might want to consider disconnecting some of your extra monitors while you're gaming to get a bit extra performance. And lastly, the most hot off the press option you can try is AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution or FSR. FSR is effectively an upscaling tool. It's a feature that's built into games, so you do have to be playing a supported title, of which there are still relatively few at the moment, but it is slowly rolling out. And it is a feature that essentially renders your game at a lower resolution than your monitor and upscales it, sharpens it, and does some magic to make it look not quite as bad as running at a native lower resolution. Now, it is a feature that is available not only for AMD, but also for NVIDIA cards and doesn't require the tensor cores that NVIDIA's DLSS option does, so you don't need an RTX card to use it. Now, if you do have an RTX card, enabling DLSS in the much wider supported titles is a great option, but since the vast majority of you don't have an RTX card, then AMD's FSR, as it slowly rolls out, is a great option to try. So that is my, my list of top tips and tricks for getting more performance literally for free. If you have any of your own suggestions, things that I've missed or things that you know work well, feel free to leave those in the comments down below so that other people can see them and try them out themselves. If you want to support this channel and see more videos, you can hit that subscribe button and the bell notification icon. If you want to support me directly, there is the YouTube join button now where you can get access to our Money Men Discord chat and sponsor free videos. Or there is Patreon if you want to get access to our Money Men Discord chat as well. There's also a load of other links in the description down below. There are merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one. The, the easiest way to get a GPU right now is on this t-shirt. Otherwise, uh, there's also a load of other designs you can check out too. And there's affiliate links to places like Amazon and Overclock UK. There's also VPN options, Hubble Bundle, Streamlabs, OBS, and a load of other stuff, so feel free to check it out. Also check out some more videos on the end cards. Uh, and again, make sure you're subscribed to see that multi-monitor testing video as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.